drop. Okay. Wanted to come outside and see how the weather is this morning. <laughs> beautiful out right now. What's up guys and good morning. Today is Sunday and I'm starting my day out a little bit different today. Um, I feel like I do the same kind of routine every weekend, which is good and fine, but I don't know. I just woke up today feeling like I wanted to do things a little bit different. So I got right up, had my morning coffee and hopped on my computer and did all the work I needed to do, caught up on the clients that had checked in so far. And normally I get up and lift right away and I just wasn't feeling that today. I'm actually probably gonna wait and do a lift in the afternoon, which I don't know the last time I I've done that but the forecast shows it's really nice out right now it may rain later so I kind of want to take advantage switch things around take advantage of the nice weather now I can train in my basement later um, I'm probably gonna play with mr. Biggs for a little bit because he's dying for some attention and then I think I'm gonna go out I'm gonna go for a run I went for a run yesterday felt really good I have not been doing much of any cardio but I did a five mile run yesterday it took me quite a bit but it just felt good to go out there and do it and for me the best way to accomplish that is if I do an out and back so I ran out two and a half miles and I was forced to come back two and a half miles so that's what equaled out my five miles a little bit sore today so I don't think I'm gonna go as long but I want to get some sunshine more sunshine on this face and we got our deck set up it's nothing crazy but we always like leave the rails up all year round that's like the biggest like pain in the butt for it so we leave that up and then we had to buy a new one of the awnings or whatever it's called um, it rips because it, it ripped because it got so windy when Jason was trying to put it up so we had to buy a new one of those from Amazon and then our deck furniture is just it's not like clean right now it's very basic we got it from BJ's which is just like a wholesale club if you will kind of like your Costco and so we just brought up one of the chairs the couch and then the little table and we'll get it fixed up but quite honestly this guy uses it more than we do. He loves sleeping on the couch at nighttime when it's cool out, so he was pretty pumped to see the return of the deck furniture. Do you wanna play with your ball? He just wants to place his ball on you and then try to rip your shoulder out of its socket. Look at those jaws, man. Also, check this out. So we have a grill, kind of gross, but this is our grill that turned into, wow, this is really bad. Burge Central, excuse my mouth. Um, I believe they had some babies in here. So we will not be using this grill. Uh, I think we're, holy, oh yeah, babies were born in here. Babies were officially born in here. I'm pretty sure I heard them hatching the other day, but I had no idea they built this giant nest. Oh my goodness. Wow. So we won't be using that to eat off of. What are you woofing at? We will be buying a new grill, um, but I'm pretty sure the babies were born the other morning. I was up getting ready for work and I heard lots of little baby chirpings. Bruce, what you barking at? You over it? <laughs> what are you barking at, sir? To get your red ball to protect me, huh? What are you barking at? Bruce, stay. Bruce, stay. Stay. You barking at them? You hear strangers? Huh? You hear our neighbors? <laughs> Morning. All right, so I got some laundry started. I wanted to get that started first, even though it doesn't make sense when it's beautiful out to do laundry first. But the past two weekends now, I've said I'm gonna do laundry on a Sunday and I failed to. So I thought if I start my day with getting the laundry going, folding some towels, I may be more apt to actually carry out my goal of getting more of my laundry taken care of, like my clothes put away. It's a whole hot mess. But I'm gonna get ready for a run, but before I go, I'm gonna take my supplements. And one of the things I've been doing lately 
not every single day, but I threw this back into the routine. I used to do this a while ago or just like apple cider vinegar and lemon, but I actually really like the flavor of this. It's a little bit pricier. It's the apple cider vinegar tonic fire cider. I found this at Wegmans. It's really quite tasty. It's got apple cider vinegar, honey, oranges, lemons, onions, ginger, horseradish, garlic, turmeric, habanero pepper, and black pepper. So it's got some heat. There is some heat to it. Um, but I've just been taking it for a couple reasons. Digestion, the potential to assist in digestion, as well as allergies. I feel like sometimes starting my day with this just kind of helps clear things out a bit. So we're gonna take a little shot, little shot ski right now with this. The oldest tablespoon in mankind. You can't even read the writing on it. It says, Dietitians Measure Up, New York State Office of Mental Health. That's so cute. We should make more of these. This is a large tablespoon. <coughs> oh, yeah. Woo. It tastes good, but it hurts. About to go out for my run, and I wanted to share with you guys two things before I go. Item number one is sunblock. Now that we actually have sun out, although you are supposed to wear sunblock all the time, this is the only brand that I wear. It's the Elta MD Skincare. It's SPF 46, and it is tinted. I prefer this one because I do have issues with acne. Um, this is for skin types. It describes me to a T. Skin types prone to acne, rosacea, and hyperpigmentation. I don't have rosacea, but I struggle with acne and hyperpigmentation. So this is perfect because it's tinted. Um, I don't get any kind of clogged pores or anything with it. We're just gonna put that on because it's especially important for me. I'm using a Retin-A or a retinol, if you will, on my skin a couple times a week. And it makes you very, very sensitive to the sunlight. So if I don't, I will break out in a rash. So I don't know why, but I'll break out in a rash on my chest. It's really weird. So I have to wear my sunblock. So that's number one. Number two, if you are a runner or you're looking to run, don't discredit how important a running sock is. Most people are so focused on the shoe and the footwear, which is, I'd say equally as important, but the sock is very, very important. I had to learn this the hard way wearing crusty little old socks a long time ago when I first started running. It is worth investing in good running socks. And I can't wear like the low cut ankle socks when I run because if they start to slip or crinkle or any little thing that you can focus on when you run that annoys you, you won't have a good run. Um, these are kind of old and crusty at this point, but this is the Baliga. Belega brand, I don't know how to say it. I don't know if you can read it, but Belega. I like them because they, they're they made for like, you can get them in like really small, I think they come in extra small and I have a really small foot. So these are perfect. I have tons of these socks. Anytime I've done a race, like my sister and I kind of started this, anytime we would do a race, we would buy a fresh pair of Belega socks. So we had a fresh pair for race day. There was no crust to them, no hardness to your sock. I know it sounds gross, but you know what happens. So um, if you are someone trying to get into running, get yourself a good pair of sneakers and the socks too. Makes a difference. So we're sunblocked up and I'm gonna head out for a run. I've got on a Buff Bunny sports bra and the performance shorts. There might still be some available online. Let me pull them down because I was sitting down. The hell did I get all over my sports bra? I think I got some block on it. Oh well. Yeah, these are my favorite performance shorts. I like them better than Nike's because the material of them is like that softer Newbery material in the waistband. It does not pinch anything in my stomach. So they're just very comfortable and they do stay in place very well when I run. So these are the Alpha Late ones I really do, do enjoy for running. So we're gonna get out there, get a run in. See you when I'm done. This is my reality. That was so freaking hard. I don't know why. I felt like dying. It was hot. I'm not used to the heat. I'm not used to working out. Well, I'm used to working out. I'm not used to running, I should say. Not used to running. And that was my second day in a row. Lots of water for me right now. I felt really dehydrated. Could be a little bit of allergies, but either way, I got out there and did it. And that's all that matters sometimes, you guys. It's not always gonna be great. You're not always gonna be good at the things you do. Quarantine's a great time to kind of perfect some of those things or try out new things you were never good at or things that you want to get back into. For me, that's running now that the nicer weather's upon us. 
and I just haven't been doing cardio at home. Like I get motivated to train at home, but to do cardio at home, I haven't been as motivated. So the nice weather has been a good opportunity for me to get back outside and do it. And no judgment here. I went out there, I did it. I sweated out some BS and I'm gonna hydrate and eat some foods. Lunch is going to be the ever so delicious Sloppy Joe, or my favorite, manwich from a can. Now, yes, yeah, so you can absolutely make Sloppy Joes much healthier. Um, you can do your own seasonings, add tomatoes, all that good stuff. But you know what? Today, I just want the real deal. So I'm going to have some Sloppy Joe. This is made with ground turkey. And then I just prefer whole wheat buns. So I'm going to do this with my sloppy joe and i am quite excited about it so taking me back to my childhood laid out in the sunshine for a while you guys not too long like a half hour and it felt so good just to lay out there and just hear the birds chirping see the sun i know i've already said that probably like three times in this video but we have had such a lack of sun in new york on top of the pandemic and everything else it really gets you feeling some kind of way so to have the sunshine just makes all of the difference but if you're wondering why mr cory is not in this vlog much today or at all and probably won't be it's because he is working all day long today he is currently in his office getting the content together for the buff bunny collection launch that's happening may 23rd that's next saturday so yesterday we spent the entire day and we went um we filmed the video here at home i did the try on then i did the commentary and then um funny little story actually first i'll give you a little sneaky peeky here although it's not really a sneak peek because when you guys are watching this vlog the Buff Bunny Collection try-on video is going to be up first. So if you haven't watched that, you guys can head on over and see my review of all these suits. There's five of them. story time we went to this like local kind of towny beach that we have near us I really love it um, we've shared it in vlogs before but it's just like a fun place to get some footage and content and we were trying to figure out how I could change into all these bikinis without or these bathing suits I should say without having to like run to the car because bathrooms aren't open there or anything like that so instead of running back to the car I found this little like corner of a building with a big bush in front of it. So I went back there to change and there was, I said to Jason, like it legit smells like urine back here. I'm sure someone took a pee or something. And literally I looked down, there was a huge puddle. It was legit urine because it was yellow. Like, you know how sometimes you can just see it? Yeah, it was a big yellow puddle of urine. And I proceeded to do all my outfit changes back there behind the bush in a public place while Jason kept look out and thankfully I could like easily like kind of slip one off and put one back on but yeah that was kind of our fun little story from the beach yesterday so anyways he's working away trying to get everything put together there's a ton he does post production with the videos the editing I do none of that if you're new here yeah, I don't have the skills here in the family. It's all Jason. So he's doing the editing. We also got a bunch of pictures, things like that. So um, be sure to check that out. I'll be spamming on the Instagram this week and lots of bathing suit updates. As promised, I wanted to share with you guys my huge beauty haul, if you will. I did shop the Sephora haul, the Sephora sale, I should say. And then at the same time, like I wasn't planning on this, but Neiman Marcus, a place I never shop at, they were having like 25% off their designer brands. And I only got 15% off Sephora. So I dabbled in a little bit of both. And I wanted to share that with you guys because you guys said you did want to see what I purchased. I've been doing a lot of makeup purchasing. I'd say that's been my number one during quarantine. That's probably my number one vice I would say is buying makeup because I love watching makeup YouTubers. It's addicting and then I watch them and I see how beautiful they look and their skin's glowing 
or their eyeshadow blends effortlessly and I'm like, oh, I need that and I'll just, that'll be the missing link to pull this all together. And it never is, but quite honestly, I just, I have so much fun with makeup. I mentioned this before that it's just, it's very therapeutic for me. It's a way for me. I, I feel like fashion and makeup and hair, you know, you might see me with different looks and things like that because it's just a representation sometimes of how we're feeling. It's a way for us to be creative and artistic. And so even on days when I'm doing absolutely nothing, I still might glam up because for me, it's just, it's kind of my time to have fun and zone out and be creative. So if you guys aren't into makeup, you can skip through this, but I do want to know what you guys have been shopping during quarantine. Has there been anything you've splurged on? Have you been online shopping or have you been really good about it and saving money? Which is also a side goal for me. I want to get my Jeep paid off. So I need to not be buying so much makeup, but we did buy some makeup. So we're going to share it with you now. First, I'll share with you what I got from Neiman Marcus. Okay, so two of the items I was going to get from Sephora, but since they were 25% off from Neiman Marcus, I grabbed them there. First one is the Georgie Armani. This is the Eyes to Kill Mascara, and it's just in black. I've heard really good things about this mascara. It is what I'm wearing on my little eyeballs today. My eyelashes are nothing crazy. I feel like I ruin them from eyelash extensions, but I really like it. It's nice and black and dark. I feel like it it doesn't make my eyelashes like goopy or anything, so it's really, really nice. But I will say I think the NYX, I'd say the NYX on the rise of Volume Lift Mascara is a total dupe for this and much, much cheaper. So I probably would not repurchase this. For concealer, I wanted to try something new recommended by Stephanie Lita. This is the Dior Skin Forever Correct Concealer. Um, this was much cheaper for me to get at Neiman Marcus and it was, um, yeah, 25% off. I got mine in 1.5 neutral. I do like it. It's very creamy. It's hydrating, but again, I feel like the designer brand not totally worth it. I think the e.l.f. Um, camo concealer, the hydrating one, is probably easily my favorite in terms of a drugstore. Very comparable to this. This doesn't do anything more magical for me, but you live, you learn. And then the last purchase I got, which was pretty bougie and unexpected, I'm a foundation whore, like trying new foundations. I'm always looking to kind of perfect my base. Um, I got the Chanel Ultra Tint, and I got this in the shade B40, which I had no freaking clue how to shade match. I am wearing it today. It matches pretty good if I'm self-tanned. Um, there's almost like, I feel like it pulls a little bit of a like reddish tone to it, which I'm more neutral, olive -y tone. Um, but it works if I have self tanner on. I really like it because it is it says all day comfort flawless finish I've been wearing that a lot on my 10-hour shifts, and I do feel like it's it's lightweight It can be built built to like a like more of a full coverage look. It's more medium um, But it is kind of like a nice finish. It, I don't feel like it looks cakey or too makeup -y. It covers nicely and it really does wear all day um, I used it during my 10 hour work shifts and I come home at night and it was like my makeup actually wasn't all broken up for once. So I do quite like that. Um, I would say probably the closest thing to this that I've tried would be the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. Um, but I do like this coverage a bit better and this is a little bit cheaper, believe it or not. So those were the three items I got from Neiman Marcus. A my Sephora haul here. Okay, with the Sephora haul, every time I went back to my cart, stuff was like disappearing because I was VIB, so I didn't get to shop right away. Um, I really wanted to try something from Glow Recipe because I've heard really good things about it. So I picked up their Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow um, Toner. It's a pore tightening toner. It's also hydrating and pore refining with hyaluronic acid, cactus water, and willow bark. So this was, their packaging is just stunning. Like I don't ever pay for things because of pa packaging. There's some Bruce hairs on it, but that baby's glass. Um, this is a very different toner than what I'm used to. It's like a thicker, almost gel-like consistency. I'm used to toner being very like 
wet and liquidy where you just wipe it on your face. This is almost, I don't know, it's like a thicker gel that you can kind of like press into your face at night. You can use it in the morning as well. Um, I've just been using it in the morning and, or excuse me, I've only been using it at nighttime before bed. And I do feel like it has given my skin a nice glow, but I haven't used it long enough to know if it really actually has reduced my pores at all. We'll see. I'm not like super hopeful on anything actually diminishing, diminishing my pore size, but um, so far I really like this. I have wanted to try, I don't know, it was like a different product I saw everyone post about with Glow Recipe, but it was sold out. Next thing I really wanted to try was the Huda Beauty uh, Easy Bake Loose baking and setting powder. My sister has this. Every makeup vlogger I know has this. This is in the color Pound Cake. And I knew my sister didn't really like rave about it, but I am obsessed with it. So um, I think I was watching the McKnight Twins. They have a really cute channel. Um, two twin sisters and they love makeup and all this kind of stuff too and it just looked like it canceled out everything and so I wanted to try it out but I was nervous about it being super drying especially since I would say I'm like leaning towards more mature skin unfortunately but I don't feel like it makes anything creasy or cakey um, it's just very nice and blurring and what I like about it is it's just very mattifying as well if you don't like a matte moment you may not like the setting powder but I am more of an oily sister over here so I do love this obsessed people don't like the fragrance I love it. I know it's not great for your skin, but I love the smell of it. It does not bother me at all. Okay, the next thing I got, I went on a little Charlotte Tilbury splurge because I felt like 15% off isn't a lot. So if I'm going to if I'm gonna like splurge, it's gonna be on items that I can't get anywhere else for a better deal. So I went on a Charlotte Tilbury moment because her stuff is expensive. Um, this has been in and out of my cart for probably three years, and I finally pulled the trigger. It's the Hollywood Flawless Filter in 4 Medium. So it's for a superstar youth glow. I do quite enjoy youth glow. And apparently it should last me for a long time, but basically you can use this just to like highlight your face. You can use it as an all over kind of primer to your makeup. I have been using it all over. Um, I'm kind of avoiding my T-zone because that's where I get most oily, but on my cheeks and on my forehead. And I don't know if this is the key or not because I've been basically using all new makeup, but I feel like my skin has looked more glowy and flawless. Like, I really do. Like, especially around my cheeks and everything, I feel like things are just looking a bit more like smoothed out and youthful. So this was like 40 something dollars, which is like, that's a hard sale for me to make on something that's not like a prime item in your makeup arsenal, if you will. But I don't know. At first I didn't think it was worth it. The L'Oreal like glow lotion is like a close second, but I don't, I don't know if it has the magic that this has in it. So I'll keep you posted on that. If you guys have tried that, let me know what you think. I don't know if I'm making it up. Um, if it's just placebo, I'm not sure. Uh, the next item I got from Charlotte Tilbury is the Hollywood Contour Wand in Fair Medium. Um, this I really, really like. I don't know if you can tell, but I really love the contour it gives. I did not add in on any powder today. I only use this for my little contour bronzer moment, if you will. What I will say is the packaging, it's only 0.4 ounces. And the applicator tip, while it's fun, I enjoy it, you kind of just like stamp it on there. When you turn it on and actually squeeze it, a lot of product comes out. So I feel like this is not gonna last me long at all. I was torn between this and the Huda Beauty one because I've heard good reviews on that as well. But I did see um, Charlotte Tilbury was on Tati's channel and it just looked like it blended effortlessly, which I need because although on the weekend I might spend a hot minute on my makeup, during the work week I need something that blends quickly that I can throw together quickly when I'm in a rush. And I loved it. I, I really, really enjoy this. I like the color it's giving me. So that was a good find. Um, two other Charlotte Tilbury products. I got the Pillow Talk Eyeliner. Um, it's kind of like this maroony color. There you go. 
I thought that might be pretty. I don't know how to show stuff. I'm like giving you like dog hands. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? This is the color. It's a little bit like maroon. Um, I only used it once and I used it over a cream shadow so it didn't quite work for me, but it is a lovely color so I need to try this a little bit more. A bit pricey for an eyeliner. And then the other item from Charlotte Tilbury I got are the Eyes to Memorize. This is one of her cream shadows. It just comes in a singular little tub like this and I got it in Mary Antoinette which is kind of like this brown golden color and I use this almost every day at work this past week. It's really easy to apply. It's very quick which I like and the color is great. I feel like it just kind of gives like a nice sultry bronzed look to the eyes. Um, trial by fire though and I did learn I need to like apply a matte shadow first so it's not like slipping around everywhere. But I did really like that for like a quick moment. The ColourPop um, color shock shadows are also kind of they're not cream but they are kind of a creamy consistency that you can apply really quick if you want something cheaper but I really do I'm really enjoying Charlotte Tilbury's line so far uh, nothing new but I re-upped on my Kat Von D tattoo liner trooper black that's basically just an iconic liner if you haven't used it um, you guys have probably noticed I'm not like fabulous when it comes to eyeliner, but if I'm gonna do a good job or even just like a light, thin, I don't have any on today, but if I'm gonna do just a little bit just to kind of bring a bit more attention to my eyes, this one is just the easiest for application. It's got the felt tip applicator. My sister turned me on to this. She kind of is the reason why I know how to do anything with makeup. Um, so I blame her for my addiction in the hundreds of dollars I have spent. But that one's fabulous. Um, the other thing that was a new try for me, I wanted to try out the Bite Beauty. Um, the Huda Beauty powder does have talc in it, I believe. I can't recall. But for an all-over face powder, I've been trying to avoid talc because I feel like my skin reacts to it and I get like the little um, bumpies underneath my skin. I don't know that they're necessarily pimples, but Bite Beauty is kind of a cleaner, the clean beauty stamp of approval from Sephora. Um, so this doesn't have talc in it. It's a flexible coverage pressed powder and I got it in medium too. So it's not going to work for me on my fair days, but I've been having, a, I'm definitely all self tanned right now, so it works for me. It's a lovely powder. It lasts all day on my skin. I don't end up getting oily and it doesn't like break up my foundation or anything. So it's really, really pretty. I enjoy that a lot. Would highly recommend. I'm kind of interested in trying their foundation, but I kind of have a whole rotation of like 12 foundations right now. I'm just being honest with you. So I don't really need another one. And the last but not least, item I got was the Wander Beauty Glow Getter Mist. I wanted a new setting spray. I was torn between this or Hourglass because I love Hourglass, but this one kind of drew me in and I absolutely love it. Uh, my main complaint with it, however, is the size of it. It looks like a little baby travel size setting spray. It's only two ounces and I believe this is their full size item and it was like on sale but it was still over $20 so I feel like that's very expensive when I normally use like the wet and wild coconut spray for like five dollars um, but this is really nice the mist on it is beautiful um, and it doesn't leave like drops on my face I don't know <laughs> I don't actually like the scent of it I don't really know what that is. Expertly formulated with glacier water. Oh, evening primrose oil for more, moisturi more moisturized, healthier feeling skin. I wonder if that's why it was a bit more expensive. Um, I really like it though. I don't end up getting overly dewy from it either, which is good because I do run oily. So it gives me like a nice glow so I'm not too matte. I can kind of like mattify my face then add just a little bit of glow to it. But we'll see how long this this last me. I'm not not so sure with only two ounces in there. But that was my whole beauty haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I thought I would take advantage 
not that I needed any of those items. I did need a couple items. I did need a couple, but I figured these are items I'm going to get eventually throughout the year. So I might as well buy them when there's a sale and I can save a little cash. So overall, I've been really, really happy with the items I purchased. So if you guys want to see more little makeup ditties with me, let me know. I still need to film another one for Instagram. I want to give you guys like my basic work look. I haven't done that yet. But uh, yeah, that's it for my makeup haul. And I need to go train. Did my cardio. I'm gonna take you guys with me while I train. So I'm gonna get um, a beverage together and go work out. A little bit noisy down here because we do have like a humidifier going. If you recall, we had mold a long time ago. So we gotta keep the air not so humid down here. But I'm proud of myself because it's like four o'clock now and i'm gonna lift on a sunday it's either i do it first thing in the morning or it doesn't happen but i've just felt in a really good space today with doing things a little bit different so feels good to like not feel like an actual like troll rat um troll rat <laughs> is that a thing that's usually how i look first thing in the morning in case you were wondering so it feels good to actually like feel put together have an outfit on have some food in my system and yeah, I'm ready to tackle this lift. I don't know what I'm gonna do today. I need to hit chest for sure. And I was gonna hit a little bit of legs, but I may just turn it into a full body day. We'll see. Workout is complete. It actually went rather well. I was really like in the zone for my workout today, which I wasn't sure if I was gonna be, being that it was 4 p.m. in the afternoon, but I really enjoyed it. I felt like I had good energy, good strength, although I was purposely kind of Still holding back a little bit as I'm adjusting to using a barbell again and just getting into a bit more, not really structured lifting, but just feeling like I'm putting in a bit more effort. So I warmed up with some resistance bands. I always like to do that. I mean, I was working out with mostly resistant bands for a long time, but I still love using those, if not for anything, just to at least warm up. And I also warmed up with some push-ups. I did a few sets of those. And I'm just showing you guys kind of a set of everything that I did, although I did anywhere between two to two to four sets on each of my movements. Um, but my first movement was flat bench barbell chest press, which this I have to do rather light because I have not pressed in so long. Um, and just the barbell itself felt really heavy, but I did add on a 10 pound on each side. I don't have five pound plates, so I'm gonna need to get those in terms of being able to up my chest press lifts. I really need fives and even two pound plates for me are really helpful. Um, but nonetheless, just fo like focusing on form and I can tell my form is not amazing in this footage so I'm, I'm aware of that my left side even though that's the uninjured side is relatively weaker than my right side so I definitely have some like inconsistencies I don't think that's the right word but so definitely need to improve there so no rush to go super heavy on those and then I moved on over and I did some dumbbell flies basically like a low to a high fly I'm not really supposed to do normal flies but like a low to a high using a dumbbell or a band feels good doesn't cause me any pain so i like doing those and sometimes i do place my hand on my chest just because just to make sure i'm actually working the chest muscle and not like using my trap or my shoulder like that for me just gives me that mind muscle connection and then i moved over into a bench incline chest press that felt really good i feel like i can definitely go heavier on those um, but I did shoulders yesterday and I think I engaged my traps too much. So I'm really sore up here. So I just didn't want to, um, do too much. So I did that and then I switched over to a decline. That's what's really nice about the bench we have right now is that you can go to a decline. I haven't done decline in like a year, it feels like. So that was a bit awkward for me, but also felt really good to hit it from a different angle. So I did decline presses, threw in some abs. Um, off the bench, you don't need a bench to do abs, but I did abs on the bench, on uh, the incline, using a weight, you don't have to use a weight. Um, and then I don't know what the other abs are 
I call them in and outs, but I'm sure there's a better name for them using a weight or you can drop the weight as I needed to and just do them without a weight. But I do like throwing in abs either in between my workouts or at the end, the beginning. Find a way to fit in those abs. The core is so important for me. Strengthening it has helped with my lower back. Um, so yeah, I did abs and then I threw in two movements for triceps. I just did tricep skull crushers with dumbbells. I'm using 10 pound dumbbells there. Um, did a few sets of those. And then I did dips off the bench, which you have to be careful with this. I put a 25 pound plate on my um, lap. So you kind of have to be careful when you're sitting down into it. You'll notice the weight kind of slides down a bit. But um, it does stay pretty secure, although it doesn't look it. It stays pretty secure, adds a bit more resistance to the dip, the tricep dip. So I believe that concluded my workout. So it was chest, abs, and triceps for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed the workout footage. I had a great workout, and that's it. I don't know how I got two scrunchies on me or why I have two scrunchies on me. I don't need either scrunchie. All right guys, I wanted to kind of chat a bit before I end the vlog about, a little bit about last weekend's vlog because you guys were so receptive to my little insecurity chat, if you will. Um, it really seemed to hit home with a lot of you guys. And I did have a big shift this week, so I feel like it's important to kind of follow up on that and talk a bit more about when we're having these insecurities or bad body image days, weeks, months, you name it. We all have them. It is perfectly normal. So if you feel like you're abnormal because you have them, you're not. Everyone has them. Just not everyone shares them. Not everyone kind of focuses on them or verbalizes them. And that's okay too, but it doesn't mean that we all don't go through it. And you guys were just so supportive of everything I shared last week. And I just want to thank you for that, number one. And number two, I wanted to give you kind of some of my tips or feelings, I guess, on how to deal with it and push through. And for me, you guys knew I was a bit nervous with receiving the Buff Bunny swimwear line, kind of feeling like I wasn't super happy with my body, feeling like it changed during quarantine, and just kind of feeling like wah wah about everything. I don't know, for me there was a few things. Like number one, I got the swimsuits and I immediately, I felt anxious to know what they looked like on me. So I immediately tried one on and it was so funny just the way like I tried it on just expecting to look at myself in the mirror and tear myself apart. And it was the exact opposite. I tried it on <laughs> and I know now I sound like I have a big head or something, but this is the world we live in. I tried it on, I took a bunch of pictures, and I was like, okay, all right. Well, that doesn't look so bad. And I was feeling myself, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it actually, it put me in the best mood. It changed my mindset. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was having these like dysmorphic thoughts about what my body was gonna look like in these swimsuits, and, and I was gonna like, disappoint Heidi or the team, which is just so outrageous to even think because it's not even possible. But um, number one, just putting something on that you feel yourself in, you know, I think can help shift your mood, shift how you feel in terms of yourself. And also remembering when you have bad, bad body image days, your your value, who you are as a person is, is more than that. So maybe you're unhappy today maybe there's there's things you're unhappy with that you want to change in your body that's okay but that doesn't mean that you have to tear yourself apart throughout the day so if you are finding yourself my next tip is having those negative thoughts and feelings throughout the day you know take a moment you can acknowledge them you don't have to just feel shameful about having them because it is a reality of for most of us, those thoughts are gonna go through our head. Maybe try to sort out a bit where it's coming from. You know, are you talking badly about yourself because you had a bad day, because there's things you're unhappy with, something didn't go your way, you're stressed out financially, you got in a fight. There's all these other things that actually do play into how we place a value on our bodies. It's just an easy way to kind of um, 
kind of take our feelings and externalize them in a way, like push them outward on our body, even though it may be other things going on that we're truly dealing with or maybe not dealing with. Another tip when I'm feeling this way is really being in tune and trying to trust my body and focusing more on, you know, working out because it makes me feel good. You don't have to be someone that works out and is active just because you're trying to lose weight. It's more about working out because it makes you feel good. So if there's a day that it makes you feel good to sleep in versus work out, then do that and be okay with it. And if there's another day where you wanna get outside and go for a walk because you know the movement will be good for you, you know the sun will be on you and it'll cheer you up, then do that. So a combination of, you know, listening to your body and doing things that make you feel good. And it's outside of working out as well. Find things that make you happy when you're in this place, when you're in this funk. And and I'm out of this funk now and it periodically comes and it won't be the last time it was here. It creeps in and it creeps out. Um, just find things that make you happy, whatever it may be, you know, do a few things that make you happy. If it's, I know right now we're limited because of quarantine and everything, but for me, even just playing some good music, dancing around like an idiot in my basement, um, going for a drive, playing with your dog, like simple things like that, that can just kind of so quickly change your mindset and change your perspective on focusing on the small things that make you happy versus you know those negative feelings about your body which at the end of the day really aren't important and it's not to say that i want to mention in here too you've kind of got your two groups right now you've got the group where it's like the anti-diet culture health at every size and then you've still got the group over here you've got a group that's that promotes weight loss and feeling good about your body and work out and do these things to lose X amount of pounds. And as a dietitian, it feels like you have to pick one camp. And I'm just, I'm not picking a camp. I am, I feel like there can be a middle ground here. I'm a, I'm about all of it. I'm about, um, you know, health at any size. I'm about focusing on health first and foremost, but I'm also about celebrating people's victories with their health and their weight loss and that there's nothing wrong with attempting to lose weight. And sure, there can be a fine line um, in that process. That could be a whole other video. Um, so I won't, I'll try not to tangent too much, but I just, I feel like it needs to be said that, you know, I feel like there can be a middle ground there between self-love, um, being okay with your own body, but then still celebrating those victories and working towards goals if that's what's important to you. Going back to my tips, one of my other tips, and you know, not to be, not to be dirty, but this is going to be a silly one, but it's so true. Um, you know, if you can, if you're struggling with your body image, and your man's around and you can you can do the deed then do the deed and have a good time and honestly I feel when I feel bad body image -ish and I'm struggling with my body usually I want the opposite to do with sex but it always makes me feel better I'm gonna be honest it always picks up my mood it always instantly makes me feel sexy you know my husband always makes me feel good about myself so I'm not trying to be inappropriate here, but quite honestly, if you can push through it, if you can push through that, like, oh, but my stomach's poking out, or all these little, like, weird things that you think about your body that are in your own head, if you can just set them aside, have a little fun with your man, you'll feel better. And also, when you're going through these periods of time, like I was this past week, like reminding yourself that just because you're struggling or you're unhappy with your, your weight or your body, it does not mean you don't deserve to eat. I, I feel like I need to say that a couple more times, but just because you're feeling that way does not mean you don't deserve to eat. Your body needs fuel. I don't care 
if you overate the day before. I don't care if you had pizza and wings and beers the night before, your body still needs nourishment. And creating that up and down cycle is just gonna perpetuate how you view your body and your relationship with food. So you kind of need to let that go and you need to remember your body needs energy and needs nourishment and you all deserve that. I don't care what you look like today, how you feel today, what changes you want to make to your body in the future, you deserve to eat. So don't feel like you need to put yourself on a restriction. And I know that can be very challenging. Um, uh, but you need to try to push through it and not ignore your body's hunger cues. It's important to listen to your body and make sure you are feeding yourself throughout the day. And it's it sounds so like simple, and I know it's not. Um, coming from like the competitive background where you had to restrict to extremes to get really lean. And that's something I'll still periodically compare myself to, not as much anymore. But like, you know, I have my my days where I'm like, oh, I wish I, I see that competition body. I'm like, damn, I know what it takes to get there, um, which isn't eating a lot, I'll be honest. Um, it's very, very restricted. But then I have days where I look at myself, how I look now, and I'm like, nah, this is sexy. This is womanly. This is... This looks good, I still look fit. Um, so yeah, your, your mind can go up and down with these things, but regardless, you need to eat, you need to fuel yourself, um, and it's, it's gonna play into your mental health with your views of your body and your relationship with food. I guess my last tip for you guys is just to, when you're in these moments, find a way to engage with your body. It doesn't have to be, exercise, it doesn't have to be sex, it doesn't have to be dancing, uh, but find a way to kind of engage with your body in a deeper way than just the weight on the scale or your stomach hanging over your pants or, you know, the fat around your arms. Like, instead of focusing on those things, engage with your body in a way, thinking about what it does for you and, and practicing more gratitude towards your own body. Uh, I'll say it again, it's okay. It's okay that you wanna make changes. Heck, I, I have some things I would like to change about my body when I plan on it, you know? If I, if I want to make some changes, I know I can do that. There's a couple of things that I'm insecure about with how my body looks, but overall, at the end of the day, I know it's a good body and it does so much for me and I'm really, really grateful for that. You know, not everybody has what we have, if that makes sense. You know, not everybody gets to stand on their two feet every day. Not everybody is able to walk around and move around and, and lift weights. So sometimes just shifting your mindset to be appreciative of what you can do. My, my injury this year taught me that so much. It was like such a stupid thing. And in an instant, so much I felt like was taken from me and I was so angry about it, but I feel like I handled it all very well. I wasn't poor me about it, but it really shifted my perspective real quick to make me appreciative of having no limitations. And maybe you are sitting here and you have limitations, so you can speak to that, but you know, shifting more towards, instead of thinking about the weight and the size and what your pant size is, thinking about all the things you are able to do. You know, quit putting so much focus on the stuff you can't do, the stuff you wanna change, and start shifting your thoughts towards the good stuff. Because when you do, it makes it so much easier to reach your goals. If you're a positive person, if you really practice being kind to yourself and others, better things will come for you in your life. I really am a firm believer in that with what energy you put out in the world. Even if you're nice to everyone and their brother, if you are mean to yourself, that's still putting out that negative energy. So really, you know, switch gears and start focusing on being kinder with yourself. And by doing some of these tips, some of those things, they really did help me this past week. And I'm not going to lie, throwing up that bathing suit selfie on Instagram and all of a sudden having 200 comments. Now, I'm not someone who's ever been about the numbers, but it was like, holy moly. It was a little bit of reassurance that, yeah, I was just being super hard on myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you need to throw yourself up, 
a selfie where you're feeling yourself, I guarantee you're going to get some positive feedback and that sometimes changes, it changes your mood too, as silly as that sounds. But anyways, those are my tips for you guys with kind of handling some of the body image junk insecurities that we deal with. It's normal. I guarantee you it's not forever. Okay, it feels like it when you're in the moment. I'm living proof, it's not forever. It'll happen periodically, it won't be the last time most likely, but you can get through it. So just hang in there and do some good for yourself, be kind to yourself, and that's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this little quarantine vlog over here with me today, and let me know what more you'd like to see. I think you guys have been enjoying the vlogs, so we'll keep vlogging. Um, make sure you are subscribed before you head on out of the channel, do all the things, like the channel, hit the post notification bell. I always say this at the end of the video when half of you probably aren't watching anymore, so I need to kind of throw that into the beginning, but you got me. I appreciate you guys so much, love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.